Welcome back, Crestview's Business. Some hotel owners think that the lodging business might not return to normal until next year at least. A survey of 130 industry leaders in the U.S. found most think performance levels won't return to pre-pandemic levels before 23. One hospitality chain knows those challenges too well. It's the Hard Rock International. It's a world-famous brand. Restaurants, casinos, hotels operates in more than 70 countries. You see them there along with the cafes, of course, which all adds to the Hard Rock name. Wherever it is in the world, the blues are the hotels and casinos. Jim Allen is the chair of Hard Rock International. He joins me now from the headquarters in Florida. Jim, um, the, obviously Omicron sent everybody back scurrying. And now I guess you have to rethink a plan for the rest of this year. What are you going to how do you do that? What do you do? Well, first of all, Richard, uh, thanks for having us. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, it really depends upon the geographic region. Uh, to give you an example, business is absolutely booming in Florida. Um, it's really not having any effect whatsoever, other than, frankly, you know, employees dealing with the virus on an individual basis. But last night we were notified in Ottawa in Canada that we need to close for, for 21 days, you know, our, our casino project there. So New York City still very, very challenged. Internationally, certain parts of Europe, okay. Other parts, going back down into a lockdown um, mindset. So each geographic region is unique. So taking the fact that Omicron and COVID will do what it wishes and you will have to respond and to a certain extent be proactive, but what's your strategy for this year? Obviously, New York is still a big hope for a casino and you've just done the deal over in Vegas and... You obviously want to expand, but how would you describe that philosophy? I, I think from the pandemic standpoint, um, we just continue to move forward, mm -hmm. focus on the safety of our employees and guests. But as far as a business standpoint, 100 percent, the brand is, is in a very proactive mindset of moving forward and expanding. Obviously, you know, entering into a relationship for close to 80 acres on the Las Vegas Strip literally on the 50 yard line, probably not a better parcel of land in Las Vegas. That's something that's very exciting for us over the next three to four years. If we're fortunate enough to be selected in the downstate you know, process in New York, that would be another huge home run. Um, very, very excited. We got to the finish line in Barcelona, in Athens, and now Mexico City. So um, you know, three gateway international cities, now those deals are completed. I'm certainly looking forward to opening Vegas and very hopeful in New York City. Right. And and uh, internationally, I mean, obviously, the, the the core gambling area, I mean, Macau, for example, or uh, and the like, they, they're just proving to be extremely challenging. And I'm wondering for, for Hard Rock International, do you switch? Do you put more precedence for domestic U.S. than international? Well, well, certainly, if if the right opportunity came up in Macau, we would be very interested. I think one of the things that we bring to a market like Macau is that we are in partnerships all around the world for many, many years. And ironically, we were actually in Macau at one time, but really only as right. a hotel brand. So, yes, um, we would be interested but on the flip side, you know, we're very, very enthusiastic about Japan, whether it be Hokkaido or Tokyo. So um, we're in it for the long run there. Our first Hard Rock Cafe opened in 1983. Oi, oi, and we think oi, that's oi. a great opportunity as we oi. move forward. Enough of that. You're aging me. I remember it. Enough. Enough already. <laughs> Listen, OK, good to see you, Jim. I wish you and yours all the best for the year. Thank you, sir. I Thanks, Richard. It.